welcome to my sewing room. We have such an exciting show for you today. It is called the yoke dress. Now a lot of times uh, when you smock, you would put smocking on a little yoke dress. And do I have some pretty versions to show you or what? This is a very fancy little smocked yoke dress. It has a little Swiss trim around the neckline and then the really pretty geometric smocking, which almost looks a little bit like puffing. Once again, traveling down this skirt, there is some more of the Swiss trim on the bottom of this skirt. Now this makes a very, very fancy and a very beautiful smock dress for school and for less formal occasions and also for Sunday school, this little very tailored version of a smock dress is one of my favorites. Do you see the little tiny, tiny piping going around the collar? The fabric is a lovely uh, print fabric, a Pima cotton, and the geometric smocking almost just blends in with the fabric. You can hardly see the stitches, but yet you know they are there. This is an absolutely adorable little smock dress. It has daisies and checkerboards on it. Once again, look at the tailoring on this collar. The little piping comes around the collar. This is a little Swiss trim, a very tailored look. And then this adorable smocking, the yellow and the red and the white and the black and the green on this good looking gray fabric. Once again, a lovely solid color fabric with a very tailored collar. The Swiss trim is gathered around the collar and then blue and red smocking. Wouldn't this be the cutest dress for a little girl to wear for back to school? Will you please come over to the technique boards with me and I will begin to share with you some of the tricks of how to put together a beautifully tailored smocked yoke dress. There are a few tricks to learn in making a really, really good looking tailored smocked yoke dress. The tricks are the piping that goes around the collar to make it really pretty and that pretty little skinny piping. Having a very flat piping that joins the smocking to the bodice of the dress, to the yoke of the dress, and these cute little elastic sleeves. Let me just share with you some of these tricks which really are very easy to do. To make pretty piping, you must cut on the bias. Your piping strip must be on the bias. Here is a little kite cord, which I've used for piping. You can use kite cord, or you can just buy piping cord. I like the little bitty skinny. Then lay your kite cord inside your bias strip, fold it up, and then stitch across it using a zipper foot or a piping foot. Now this is purchased baby piping, which is great, except you've got to cut off this seam allowance to the seam allowance of your little collar. Okay, using your basting tape, baste your piping around your collar, lay the top piece of the collar down on that, and stitch all the way around. Turn it right side out, and here will be your beautiful little collar with that tiny baby piping on it. Next trick, elastic in the sleeves, and Kathy McMakin's going to show you this in just a few minutes. You see the line there for elastic? You will simply zigzag over that elastic, and then your little sleeve will be really pretty like this. This is a special little trick we'll share with you in just a minute. Making a placket is super easy at the, this old-fashioned way. Cut your placket piece. It can be straight, and this one's cut on the selvage. Then put your placket, then you've got to cut a little hole in your fabric, obviously. This one's about four inches long. Then put your placket piece down, and notice there's a little V in the middle. So you pull your fabric out to make a little V in the middle, and then you're ready to stitch. Straight stitch down, then turn your placket piece back, and you're ready to turn it to the right side. Here we are, and you're going to stitch in the ditch right alongside the placket piece. The finished placket piece will now look like this. Do a little straight stitch, fold it up, and you have an old-fashioned placket. Next comes lining the collar, lining the yoke, rather. You make two fronts and two backs is what it boils down to. Then stitch them together and put them down like this. You know your collar is right under here. By the way, be sure that those little piping uh, collar pieces meet right in the center. Okay, then you bring it down like this and stitch all the way around the collar line, turn it right side out, and here is that absolutely beautiful collar and a self-lined bodice of the dress. 
Here's another glue trick right here. The uh, washable basting tape, uh, first of all, I've stitched the bias, um, the bias piping to the top yoke. Then I put this basting tape all the way across, pull off the top piece, and look here. Then turn it underneath to come down on top of your smocked piece. Now, of course, your little dress will already be smocked. We've just pleated ours. Come in here, baste it down with your basting tape. Make it go along there nice and straight, and then come in and stitch in the ditch. Can you see where I'm showing you there? Stitch in the ditch, and that attaches your piping to your smocked piece. Now you are ready to finish your lining. You've already sewn the front and the back together. You're ready to take your little sleeve and go ahead and sew in your sleeve. The last thing you do on the sides will be simply to, hold, to sew the whole side of the dress up. We put the sleeves in like this. Now then the last thing you're going to do, let me undo this just a minute here. This is your self lining that you've already put together. Simply fold it underneath and bring it down and pin it and I like to whip this by hand. Some people may sew it on the sewing machine, but I like to just whip that by hand. Those are the tricks. And I'd like to come over here and introduce you to Kathy McMakin. Kathy is construction editor of So Beautiful magazine, and I have asked her to stitch some of these tricks for you so you can see them in real live motion. Thank you, Martha. The first thing I think we need to stitch is probably the collar. A lot of people are very scared to sew piping in a curb, but piping is actually very easy to sew. Um, you can either make your piping yourself or you can purchase piping either one. The most important thing that I can tell you about piping is you always trim your seam allowance of your piping down to the seam allowance that you need for the collar or the yoke or whatever you're putting your piping on. Now, we already have our piping stitched to the lining of our collar. Now you can choose to stitch it to the outer part of your collar too if you'd like, but I always sew it to my lining. And then you'll want to, before you sew it down, you always want to clip that seam allowance of that piping so that it will curve for you. Then we're going to lay the front and the back together and we'll stick a few pins in here just to make sure that nothing everything gets stitched in, everything gets caught. Now what I'm going to do is when I stitch, I want to stitch right inside this line. That way when I flip my collar to the outside, I won't have any stitching that actually shows. So it makes it very nice. Now the foot that we are using on our sewing machine has a um, groove in the bottom of it. This is a piping foot and it has a groove in the bottom of it, and we're just going to let the piping ride in that groove. So we're going to start by stitching this, and we'll just pull our pins out as we go. We'll stick them in right there. And I'm not going to have to really pay really close attention, because that piping is going to just ride right in that groove. Now after I stitch this on, then the next thing we'll have to do is um, clip the curves because we'll want our collar to turn nicely. Now, I'm not going to stitch all of that, but what I want you to see is that you actually end up with two rows. This row stitches the two pieces of collar together, and that outside row was the row that we used to stitch our piping to our lining. So let's go ahead and take some pins out, and we'll flip it, and I'll show you what I mean. Now, we would normally clip that curve, but can you see how close that piping is to both of those layers? It turns out really nicely. Now, the other thing we wanted to show you was elastic in a sleeve. Now, Martha, if you could just hand me that elastic and we'll I just change this foot right quick because we want to just put on a regular zigzag foot. This is a clear foot and we'll change our machine to zigzag. Now, if you don't know how long to cut your elastic, your pattern usually tells you how long, but if you don't know how long, then we would suggest that you don't tack your elastic into your dress until your dress is finished. You can try it on inside out, um, pull it up to fit the child's arm, and then you can tack the elastic. But this is the way we get this in to a dress. You just want to start with a tab of elastic out of the back of your machine, and then we're going to put our zigzag length 
on a fairly wide zigzag in uh, about a two length. And we just want to go back and forth over the elastic, not catching the elastic in the zigzag. So, after you get it on, and we've drawn a line where our elastic placement needs to be, and we're on the back, the inside of our sleeve. Okay, so we're just going to stitch right along. And the main thing we're going to do is not catch the elastic in the sleeve. Let me switch hands here. Kathy, one of the things I love about that so much is as the child gets older and the arm get large, gets large, you can let the elastic out. That's exactly right. Um, the other thing is, as you sew the elastic, you can actually stretch it. And um, when you stretch elastic, it actually gets skinnier. <laughs> so it's a little easier to not catch it in. Okay, and this only takes a second. We'll just run right along here, and when we get and to you're not this catching end, that elastic at all. No, ma'am, I am not. Okay, and then I'm going to stitch to almost what my seam allowance is down here. I'm going to back up, and then we'll take this out, and we'll show you what happens here. Okay, this is our sleeve, and you can see it's not very gathered now, but because I didn't catch any elastic in, I can gather it as full as I need to. That's a neat trick. Now, Kathy, how about that piping on the front of the dress? Okay, we're going to move <laughs> these and we'll pull this over. Okay, um, this is the trick that Martha showed you on the board. Uh, what we've done is we've put, we've already stitched our piping to the bottom of our yoke and we've already placed our wash away basting tape along the bottom edge of the piping. Then you take this and you pull it away and we'll see if we can't get it just away. Okay, make sure the sticky part stays on your piping. We'll put that to the side. Then you'll fold this under so that the piping, so that the piping shows from the front. Then we're just going to stick it down in place. And we want to make sure, of course, that you draw your armholes into your skirt piece. Then you can lift it up. That's the most wonderful thing about this tape. You can lift it up and stick it back down again. Then when you get everything straight and you can fix all your pleats and everything, then we would go to the sewing machine and we would stitch right in the ditch. So we can set our sewing machine so that it sews right in the ditch where the yoke meets the piping. That is so exciting, Kathy. And, and I think with these tricks, almost anyone will find it easy to do a beautiful tailor, a beautifully tailored smocked yoke dress. Next, we have a really wonderful craft for you. This tissue box cover, you see I've got my tissues. Let me pull it out right there, okay? It is very easy to make and very pretty too. Using a, a placemat or a napkin, this little piece slips up here, and then let me show you how this works on the bottom. There's a little, a little elasticized piece that comes around and holds it onto your tissue box. Now, here is all there is to making one of these. First of all, you have to cut a napkin or a, or a, a placemat in half, stitch around the corners, and fold under a piece. Now, the next piece you make looks somewhat like this, a little folded under so there's a little slit. I lay this down right on top of the folded napkin piece, then I stitch around. Let me say I've already finished it here, let me show you. I lay it down and I stitch around where the turn back is on the napkins. Then the last step is I take the piece that has the elastic that will go around the tissue box, turn it wrong side out, and I hold up that little piece I've just stitched down, stitch all the way around it, and you see I've already put a casing in there, so it's now ready to go. Okay, let me flip it open, and now I have a tissue cover that's just ready for two perky little white bows, and you see it's ready just to slip on a tissue box. It really is a little easier probably than I've shown you, a little bit complicated to show that right here. So that will be a lovely gift for a bride. For anyone on your list, I think it would be appreciated, but you know where I really think you ought to make one of these? is for your own bedroom. It's just such a pretty piece to hold those ever needed tissues. And now I have a really pretty doll dress to share with you. We have several different types of yoke dresses we've shared with you on the show and our little dolls, not one yoke dress, but two yoke dresses. This little dress is a French sewn version. 
absolutely beautiful with all the lace and the entredeau. Let me turn her sideways where you can see this pretty little sleeve with the lace insertion which goes right down the middle of the sleeve. Now let me turn her back around on down the skirt. Can you see this beautiful fancy band? This is kind of a neat trick. I've used a little ecru thread and a stitch, a decorative stitch out of my sewing machine to make her hand loom. So you see it has laces and then a dress panel with decorative stitches and more laces, entredeau and a little ruffle. This little doll is dressed really, really fancy. Now this little doll is all ready to go to school or, or just to go play. Quite a different version of the yoke dress. I really like the use of rickrack at the top of the yoke. I like the little, uh, bi the little bias binding on the sleeves. This is a plain little pique dress. And I especially think the little sailboat applique is precious. Do you like the detail of the uh, little check at the bottom and then the little Rick rack that goes all the way around it, even got some fish. Okay, how do we make both of those dresses? A couple of very simple techniques I'd like to share. When you create a piece of fabric, for instance, for the yoke of the dress, if you'll look right here, I just zigzag all of the different goodies together, then I trace off the edge of the front yoke, and then after they've all been put together, then I cut it out. Now, for instance, how do you get the lace in the sleeve? the way her little sleeve is, you simply zigzag the lace insertion on one side, zigzag it on the other side, and then go back behind and trim away and you have that pretty little split sleeve. Now for those of you that are fortunate enough to have machines with decorative stitches, and hopefully that's most of you, you will find that the fancy band is absolutely precious when you put lace at the top, lace at the bottom, and you can zigzag, uh, not zigzag, you can decorative stitch right down the middle of this dress piece and have a hand loom that if it came from Switzerland, it would cost you a lot of money. But you see, it hasn't cost you very much at all. Now this little pique dress is so adorable. You cut out your pieces of your boat. Here we've used wonderful summery colors, the blues and the pinks and the yellows and the greens. Cut them out. The next step, of course, is to applique them on, simply zigzag them on using the same color, and then this is really darling. You go ahead and serge on a double piece of that baby, baby gingham, and then on top of that seam, which is the hem, simply straight stitch your rickrack down, and here is the little finished hem. Now that would be an adorable hem treatment for a little girl's dress as well as for a doll's dress, and I just love those summer colors on white. Next, we have a quilt square for you that is really pretty. Since you know how to make the beautiful baby piping, I thought we'd use that piping in our quilt square. This wonderful, wonderfully colored quilt square has a circle that's almost like a cameo. And speaking of cameos, this Swiss piece of embroidery really looks like a, a lady maybe from the 1920s with her newly bobbed hair. Okay, let me show you how to do this. Once you make your piping, first of all, you've got to cut a circle. I'm sorry, you've got to cut your oval out of your center of your pink fabric. Then once you make your piping and make that little baby piping the way we've shown you how to do today, you pin it all the way around. Now you're going to have to clip those curves. You know, anytime you take anything around a curve, it has to be clipped. Once you pin it around, all the way around, clip the curves, then you're ready to stitch on the inside, on the inside of the piping. Then this will be turned to make a little frame, almost just like a little picture frame. Now, I can't turn it very well with all this still pinned in, but it will turn just like a little picture frame. Next step, you can zigzag your little oval, or you can even wait and zigzag this little motif after you've put the picture frame in. Okay, I'm going to take the picture frame, put, put it on top of the blue fabric, turn it under, and stitch in the ditch in order to stitch those two together. Probably it would be wiser to wait till all the stitching is done and clipped away for you to put the little oval in so you can get her in exactly the right location and then zigzag the little Swiss motif in and you have a little Swiss picture frame. Next, we have a really, really interesting pillow for you, one that I like a lot. I got the idea for this pillow from a very expensive looking one in a decorator magazine. 
This pillow is so sweet. It's a little round pillow. It is caught up at the top and tied with this beautiful little cord. And look, can you see the, uh, the lining is lace? Here's how easy it is to make that pillow. First of all, start out with a big circle of two fabrics. This side is the lace and this side is your water stain taffeta or your moire. All right, then I'm going to straight stitch all the way around the outside of the circle, leaving enough to turn it right side out. Then very simply, here's how that cording goes on. After I've turned it right side out, I simply butt the cording up to the side. You don't have to encase it or anything, just butt it up, use a cording foot, and zigzag the cording onto the outside. Next step is to hold it up like this, but before I hold it up like this and put that little piece of elastic which I've just tied around there, the next step is, guess what it's stuffed with? You got it. Just polyfill that you stuff stuffed animals with, so you stuff it in there. And you hold it up like this, turn it around. First of all, tie it with a piece of elastic. You actually could use a rubber band. And then taking your cording, make a really pretty bow. And I think that's a pretty pillow, very unusual, especially to go on your bed with your other pillows. Won't you come along with me to my attic, one of my very favorite places, and let me show you a beautiful antique dress. This dress I have for you today has some of the most incredible details that I have ever seen on it. Let's just look at the bodice. The bodice, first of all, has pin tucks that go across. Then you have your laces, then the lovely gathered fabric. Let me just come down the front and let you see. Then right here we have beautiful wide tucks. Look at the waistline of the dress, how pretty it is. It goes in, down into a V with pin tucks in between the two pieces of lace. The skirt is as elegant as the top. Let me just hold it up so you can see. You know what, there's a big hole in it, but I'm gonna let you just see the hole anyway. We'll pretend it isn't there because the details are what we're looking for. And I love my dresses that have holes in them just as well as the ones who don't because I'm looking at this from the lovely details. And sometimes when a dress is well over 100 years old, it will have a few holes in it. For our Sewing from the Heart, I have a letter from Bruce Patterson from Birmingham, Alabama, and he works at Forestdale Methodist Church. To sum it up, the church under the leadership of Anne Dobini has taken scrap material and fashioned hospital gowns for hospice patients. The gowns are decorated in many different ways to cheer up these terminally ill patients. Several hundred gowns have been donated to area hospice programs with all of the work being done by the women of the church. The making of the gowns left mounds of very small scraps of material. Someone had the idea that the scraps would make good stuffing for sleeping bags, so now the ladies of the church have been making bags from donated material and stuffing them with the leftovers from the hospice gowns. The bags are being given to Birmingham area shelters for the homeless. We would like to enc encourage other churches to begin similar programs to benefit their areas. Well, I'm just so thrilled to tell you that women and men all over this great world, not just the United States, because we've had letters from other countries too, are using their sewing machines to help those less fortunate. And you know, that really is a wonderful part of the joy and the sisterhood of sewing. I have had a wonderful time having you visit me in my sewing room today. I hope you love knowing how to put together those easy, easy little smock dresses with that good looking piping because I certainly enjoyed making dresses for Joanna and I've also enjoyed making dresses for my granddaughters using that method. Thank you for joining us and I hope to see you next time. Mm -hmm.